All right, we're going to knock these questions out using Excel. First thing we're going to do is we're going to copy Control C. I'm going to open up a new spreadsheet, nice and fresh. Control V or just paste. And I got my numbers there. So the first question, I believe, is the... So these are depression scores, right? Between zero and 100. 100 means they're very, very depressed. Zero means they're not depressed at all. So let's start asking the, answering the questions. The mean and the standard deviation. Okay, the mean and the standard deviation are easy. I'm simply going to pick a cell and I'm going to label them. So the mean of this data, I got a couple of options here. I am just going to go to the function bar. Get my function box, make sure I'm in statistical, and average. Average means mean. And it says, where do you want the average taken from? Never believe this data set here. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's not. Again, just highlight all the data and click OK. So there's our mean. Uh, two, two decimal points is fine with me. So let me make it big so you guys can see it. There's the mean. Standard deviation, the same thing. Go to the function bar. Statistical, Saint Dev. And we always use anything with an S at the end. That just means a sample, standard deviation of a sample. Same thing, don't trust the numbers. Highlight them. That's your, that's your data set right there. Click OK. And there's your standard deviation. I'm going to put this here. I'm using my format brush up here so I can get big. Okay, so there's questions one and two. Question three, I'm going to highlight this data, put it all on a spreadsheet again, just because this is a spreadsheet class. Let's just get that in mind. So I'm going to put those right here for now. Wait, put them right here for now so you can see them. Beep. All right, so we have to standardize those pieces of information. Each one of these is a measurement, an individual piece of data from the data set. So, what do you remember about standardization? Let's go back to the Moodle. Well, there it is right there, standardized scores. It is a very basic formula. And it looks like this, right? Your z-score is the difference between the individual measurement, also called the random variable in this case, minus the group mean divided by the group standard deviation. And the z tells you how many standard deviations away from the group mean each individual piece of data is. So that's what that is, but we're going to take a huge shortcut. We're going to jump over to, here's the formula sheet. Let me show you where that is on our Moodle. I think I passed one out for you guys, but it's also on our Moodle, and it's right. Yeah, use this one. So when you click on that, you get this one. Practically everything you need to know in this class is right here on this Excel. So if you want to get an A-plus on this class, practice these formulas. But now it tells us to standardize. So here's the first one right here. How to standardize a piece of data. We're going to use this formula, okay? I'm just going to take a real shortcut and copy the actual formula, right? Copy, go back to my Excelio, and I'm just going to pick a cell, any cell, and in fact, I'm going to pick the cells that are close to here. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Okay. So let's do 31 first. So I'm going to paste the formula back into the bar. Or I could have just typed in equals standardize and it would have popped up. Or I could have gone to the function of X bar and got standardized. So the, the independent variable is 31. And the mean is 50.89. And the standard deviation is 22.42, 22.42. Enter. Bam. So that is a z-score for the guide number 31. And we know it's going to be negative because it's less than the mean. The mean is around 51. So I knew that this was going to be negative. Let me pretty this up for you. Can you see that? Good. So we're going to repeat that process with 64... In fact, watch this. We're just going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that all the way down. 
But now I'm going to go to the 64. I'm going to click in, in this cell, the 64 cell. I'm going to go back up to the formula and change 31 to 64. Enter. Done. So 51. 51 would be going to be real close to zero because the mean is 50.89. But I click in that cell and I change 31 to 51. Enter. Told you. <laughs> and then 15 is going to be a very low negative number. I'm going to change 31 to 15. Enter. And 91 is going to be a very large positive Z score 91. Boom. So remember, these are the these are the Z scores. This tells me how many standard deviations away from the mean each one of those is. So there's those answers. Next question, what's the p-values associated with these z-scores? So now it wants the p-values. Okay, so z-scores negative 0.89. Let me pull this up to try to help you guys figure out, remember this stuff. Here's, here's a z, right, here's a bell curve, right? Normal, standardized data down here on the bottom. So that means zero standard deviations. That's where the mean is. And so we're looking at negative 0.89, which is relatively close to negative 1. So the area under this curve, which is the p-value, is going to be something like this. You're going to draw a line straight up until it hits the curve, and then the area is to the left of it. So what's the area underneath the curve? It's always 100%. So if this total hump here is 100%, then if we're going to cut off about this much of it, it looks roughly like a third, somewhere around 0.3 or something like that. So keep that in mind. But now we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at a, uh, let's look at a Z table first. So if we had a Z table and our score is negative 0.89, we have to go down to the, ne oh, we were on the negatives. Okay, so negative 0 0.8, right? That's right here. And then where it intersects with the last decimal, uh, oops, negative, positive, negative, sorry, get back in there, you. So negative 0.08, and then the 9 is the last decimal, so you go down here where it hits the 9, and where they two intersect is, it looks like 1867. Remember that, 1867, that's the p-value, that's the area underneath that little chunk. So my estimate of 0.3 is a little bit high, but 1867, that's one way to do it. Second way to do it is we go to our Excel sheet and we're looking for the area under the curve. That's the probability. So you pull up your formula sheet here. And since we know the z-score, we're going to use this formula, right? Norms dist. It's going to give us the area. So this is the z-score, the area under the z-score to the left of it. It's always a less than situation. So we're going to go and... Here, let's just do this the old-fashioned way. We're going to go to the function bar. We're going to go down to, make sure you're statistical, we're going to go to norms dist. Norms dist with the S in the middle. There it is. Bam. And so our z-score is, the first one is negative 0.89. That's all it needs. Cumulative is always true, you guys. And it was 18.67 from the, from the table. And if we go down to four place values, it's 18.67 from that as well. Hold on. Let me make that bigger so you guys can see it. Oops, not that one. This one. Ta -da. Now watch. Okay, so that's that one. And I could do this with all of these again. I'm simply going to put my cursor in the bottom right hand corner of the box until it turns into that little one and I'm going to go and change the, just the values. So this one is 0.58. Done. 0 0.0. I should know that already, right? Zero cuts the data in half, right? That's the mean. And negative 0.16. Not very much, right? Is that right? Oh, negative. I'm sorry. Forgot a decimal point. Let's see what happens. Boom. And 1.79. So you should think 1.79, that, that's going to be pretty close to 100% because of, right? That's pretty close. Because, let's pull that up here. Where'd you go? 
1.79 is way over here, right? Between 1 and 2. So again, these p-values, you find the z-scores, you draw a picture straight up. I'm sorry, you draw a line straight up, and it's the area under the curve to the left of that number. So those are all less thans, okay? So here are the p-values for those. All right, question five is a trick question, right? See, the law of statistics using this probability bell curve type thing only works with less than or greater than situations, not equal to. So the probability of any individual measuring equaling any specific number is always zero, okay? Trick question, but you got to know that. Number six, what's the probability of an outpatient chosen to have a depression score of less than 50.89? Again, that's easy. That's the mean. So that's going to be 50%. Remember, the, the mean of a, a data set, of a normal data set, always cuts it in half. You can go either percents or you can go point decimals, whatever you want. Make yourself happy. Right? Or point five oh oh oh. What's the probability of an outpatient chosen at random will have a depression score higher than 40? Okay, higher than 40 is a greater than. So now we need to go back to our data or Excel formula sheet somewhere. Come here, you. And area under the curve, looking for the p-value uh, from an unknown z-score. And that's us. We don't have a z-score for 40. 40 is a measurement. And our sample size is 1. So we're going to use the norm dist. No S this time. Norm dist. I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm going to go copy. And I'm going to pick that cell. I'm going to go to the function bar. I'm going to paste it in there. And our number is 40. Our mean is 50.89. Standard deviation is 22.42, 22.42. It's true. Now, one one minor, actually one major change, this, this norm dist would give me the area to the left of 40. I want to the right of 40 because it's a higher than, greater than, more than. So then I'm going to do 1 minus between the equal sign and the end of norm dist. Hit my function, and there it is right there. Get bigger. Okay, so 68.64. Now, what I could have done is this. I could have gone back to the sheet here. And, oh, no, I could not do that. I'd have to turn it into a z-score first, which I don't want to go around through. But there is the probability right there. I even put the formula in there. All right, so now what depression score is the cutoff for the lowest 10%? So here, try to get the picture again. Lowest 10%. So the lowest 10% of this is going to be somewhere around here. It's going to be a little tiny chunk to the left. So we need a z-score somewhere around negative 2-ish. Somewhere between negative 2 and negative 1. So what do you do from there? You go back to your Excel spreadsheet formula. It is your best friend. And it's the one here that has percentages. Got it? So we're looking for a percentage cutoff. So if I want something below it, I'm going to use norm env. And if I want something above it, I'm going to subtract the probability from the norm env from 1. It's the same thing with that left and right, greater than, equal to. you got to subtract something from 1 when it's greater than or more than using these formulas and tables. So I'm going to use the norm env. I'm going to simply copy it. Back to our spreadsheet. Boom. Pick a cell in your cell. How about that cell? I'm going to go paste the function into the table. And what percent do I want? I want the bottom 10%. So you could just type in 10%. Don't forget the percent mark. And the mean, again, is... Get back in there. It is 50.89. And standard deviation is 22.42. Enter. And there is the cutoff for... Let me make that bigger for you. So for the for the the bottom ten percent of the depression scores, the cutoff is twenty two point sixteen. So in other words, 
10% of the depression scores are lower than 22.16. How's that strike you? Okay, 22.16. All right, last question. And now they want a they want the top highest 5%. Back to the picture. Top highest high the bleh. The top highest 5% are going to be right around here somewhere, right? We just want the top highest chunk. So, and again, this is the top, the highest, the most, the more than, greater than. We're going to have to subtract something from one. It's basically going to be the same formula. It's going to be that, uh, hold on. It's going to be that formula, and, but I'm going to subtract the top 5%. From 100%. So it's kind of weird, but 95% on this table is the same. The bottom 95% is the same as the top 5%. You get the exact same z-score. Okay, that's all you got to do. And that is the number right there. So the, the highest 5% of the depression scores are over 87.77. Okay, let me put that in. All right, that's it in a nutshell. But just remember, this picture, I'm hoping, will help a lot. These are z-scores. The area under the curve of a z-score is a p-value. Everything in the table and in Excel, the, the values you get are to the left of the z-scores unless you do a, a minus one trick, one minus whatever it is trick. Okay, that's it. MGZ, out.